Welcome to another episode of the Big Picture Business Podcast. Today, we are so excited to tell you that we have some very special guests with us, David and Dana Hagstrom. They are professional mentors, inspirational speakers. They're business coaches who specialize in empowering business owners with effective breakthrough strategies to boost home businesses. And they also happen to be married. They're like the ultimate power couple. <laughs> so again, we are just, we're, we're so excited and we're so honored to have you on the show with us today. So welcome. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Thank you, Dominica and Rory. We're delighted to be here. What I would love to hear is just your story because I might know and Rory might know a little bit of background, but your story is so unique. So if you wouldn't mind sharing that with our listeners, that would be great. Yeah, which part of the story? Why don't you start with our Mexico story? We have a great Mexico story. Yeah. Um, I mean, how did we get here? You know, that is what we get asked a lot. And I love to share that story because in case you, your listeners don't know, David was a pastor for 30 some years and I was a paralegal and we were living a happy little ho-hum life in Iowa. And we were serving an adorable little congregation, but they were struggling. And, you know, we're big city kids. So that was, first of all, hard to be in a little town. But, you know, the people were so adoring and loving that we, you know, knew God put us there. But when David came to me one night and said, out of the blue, you know, we have to work another six or eight more years before we can retire. All these thoughts are going through my head because he'd been downsized from the prior congregation of this huge church. And here we are in this small church that is struggling, how are we going to work another six or eight years? Hmm. And then he said, or we could retire to Mexico this year. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, because I had, I was already, you know, in that mindset and I was going through all of that. I, I said, well, let's do it. I'd rather, I'd rather spend time with you and, and live a little differently than and in, in the way we were, we were just going in so many different directions. Wow. And that just sounded so enticing. No the more ultimate. Iowa winners for us. <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. The ultimate leap of faith. Wow. Yeah. We, yeah. we spent a few months doing our due diligence, but within a year we were here in Mexico. Wow. That's incredible. And how long have you been in Mexico? We've been here four years now. Yeah, a little little more, but you know, we got here and we sort of looked at each other after a few uh, weeks here and said, "Well, now we what?" Do <laughs> it had been such a whirlwind to pack up things and sell things and downsize and figure out rules for crossing borders and all of that that when we finally got here and rested for a few weeks, it was like, "Okay, next." What do I want to do when I grow up? You know, we had a whole clean slate. What could we do? Well, we'd already been uh, blogging and we had two blogs going at that time. One about learning uh, a new language and one about retiring. Oh. And so we were, we continued working on those and we picked up a couple products that, well, they were both network marketing products at the time, but in the process doing, of doing that, built some friendships with, especially with another power couple in the marketing space that have really been mentors for us over the last few years. Yeah. And I think it was a couple years back that we were at an event with them. And when you could go to events. <laughs> when, yeah, back when you could go to events. And Late one night, after we'd been in sessions all day, we were in our hotel room, and I was going over my our ninety day plan for where where our business was going and talking with our mentor and he helped tighten up a, f a few details and things that we were working on, and then said, "Okay, you're ready. You need to be out there coaching others." And, you know, we hadn't really considered that particular direction. Mm -hmm. And I certainly didn't feel ready at that time. But in retrospect, we realized that, well, in my 35-year ministry career, my gift for strategic planning had really come, come to the fore. And that's, that's why I was in this 
a huge church, over a thousand in worship every week. And I was an executive pastor doing strategic planning and coaching other staff members. Mm. And that was before I was downsized yeah. was as yeah. we, they went through some changes. But what had happened over, over the years that we'd been, that we'd switched to, to online marketing is that I had learned to apply my gifts for strategic planning in this new business. Hmm. And what he was pointing out to me is, okay, now it's time that you're coaching other, other folks. You've got such a systematic way of looking at everything that would be helpful to, to others. And that was, so that led us in a new direction, exactly. uh, doing some coaching. But we still felt a little bit of like there was something missing. Hmm. Uh, we could help uh, people with almost any piece of online marketing, but it was sort of hit and miss what piece to work on when. And we sort of had the feeling like we were putting pieces into uh, a jigsaw puzzle but we didn't have the box cover, you know, how you look at the box to, to see what the overall picture is supposed to look like. Yes. The overall picture was still unclear. Mm -hmm. And then one day, as we kept on sort of working at things in whatever order they came, finally that picture came into focus for us and for coaching others, where we could walk through a list of questions with people and say, okay, here's where you need to focus now to hmm. take the next step. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when things that's, changed. Yeah. That's when things got really exciting for yeah. us. Yeah. And we had the, that was really the birth of your pathway to profit. Right. Mm. And which is uh, your course, right? It's which like is the, the which is the course. Yeah. It took us, it still took us another year to develop the whole course, but we started leading people through that process as we worked with them. And Test it out, you know, it worked for us, but Will it work for other people? Exactly, exactly. So that's the place where we got really excited about things and where we became really confident that we could help others to develop an online marketing business without an overwhelming task list. Mm -hmm. yeah. Keep it simple. That's, that's really important. If you give too many things for people to do, they don't do it. Yeah, and it's just basic psychology. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, that, that's great that you've come up with a system that you can then share with your clients and, and help them implement so that they know what they need to do in their business. And that I'm sure that gives them clarity. Am I correct? Right. Yes. Yes. And I know for me, even, you know, when we're working on something new, you know, with David and his strategic thinking, he'll come to me with a blueprint and say, okay, this is what you need to do. What? And I'm like, oh, it was like he's given me such gold because my brain doesn't think like that. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of all over the place and I'm super touchy-feely and want to make everybody, you know, happy. I'm this encourager, right? So we're this great, great mix. He helps me figure it all out and then I make everybody feel good doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good team. That's yeah. a good yeah. team. Yeah, definitely. So one of the things that you, you said is that you weren't, you didn't feel like you were ready to coach. How did you, how did you deal with that? How did you come to the conclusion that you actually could? And, and what did that feel like when you actually made the decision? We started out and it's probably not the best way to do things, but we started out with group coaching and work with people in a group setting and help them deal with whatever they're working on. In yeah, it started sort of ad hoc because we would just sort of say, okay, what questions do you have tonight? <laughs> like and, on the hot seat all the time. But, you know, we had the knowledge, we had the background, and it was, it showed us that we could because we had the answers. Mm -hmm. And we were watching people have the breakthroughs. They're like, oh, well, this this works kind of like when the mother bird pushes the baby out, the baby doesn't think it can fly, but once it starts flying, then, oh yeah, I can do this. So that's kind of how we felt about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like you just jumped in, but you had to get to that point of even making the decision to jump in. What decision was that, that were, you know, or what, what were you dealing with that you had this conflict of, I don't know if I'm ready. I'm, uh, just knowing my background, I've got a PhD. 
which means that I learned more and more about less and less until finally they said I, I knew almost everything about almost nothing. And <laughs> so that's, that's sort of the way I approach things. I want to master a subject before I start teaching it. And, uh, and uh, so in your head, you're not ready. And so in my head, I'm not ready. So, so, mm -hmm. but, but a coach Todd looking was, in, they could see you were ready. Yeah. He was telling me, Hey, uh, <laughs> you got plenty, just get out there and do it. <laughs> yeah. I love that. You know that about yourself that, you know, like, I really just want, I want to master this. I want to make sure I know everything there is to know, but I'm sure as you know, at this point, and you've probably known this all along, especially with starting your own business, there's always so much more to learn. It's like every day something new comes up, right? But that also exactly. I'm sure is fun, fun for you, right? Because that's your personality. <laughs> oh, I love, I love to learn, but, but together we've had, this, we've had this thing of saying, okay, we can learn, but we've got to implement as we go. Yes. The Even if it's not comfortable yet. Yeah. Just get out and do it. Yeah. There have been nights about? where I've been frustrated. I've come into his office and he's watching another training video. I'm like, hey, we haven't put into action what we just learned. Stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, no, that's my happy place. <laughs> I so, love learning. That's so wonderful, but also so good that you can encourage him, like, let's take action. Because Rory and I talk about that all the time. Even in this last episode, we, we released it today, actually. We were talking about just our own clients that they spend thousands of dollars on courses and then don't do anything with it. It's like, what's the point? You have to put it into action. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so you want to be a professional student your whole life. And I think that would be his aspiration. <laughs> He's got so much to share. I can't let it all stay up here. You know? Right? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I've seen the extreme of that. I had a, a family friend growing up. You know, she was older than me. And but my grandparents were were friends with her parents, and she uh, basically just spent her whole life going from degree, 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 mm -hmm. and it, it left her with so little options in life because she had no life experience to back up the information she was learning, a real world experience, and and then you get in that that situation where it's like, okay, well, you can become a professor and teach the information you've learned, but you haven't implemented any, anything in the real world. So, you know, you can't just like go and start a business really when you just got the information right. and, and you get so sucked into that, that just learning, 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 Cycle. always feeling like you need the next bit of information. The next bit of information is going to be the thing that solves the problem. But, and it, you know, it helps, but if you haven't implemented anything, you don't get any feedback. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get feedback, then it's all information in a vacuum. It, that sort of takes me back to my first year in ministry. You know, I had just finished a PhD. I had a couple master's degrees. Now I'm out in this small community. And I was out with a farmer in the congregation, riding on his tractor together. And he, he turns to me and says, you know, that was a really interesting message you had for us last Sunday. What were you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's a little which, wake up call there. <laughs> which, you know, you know, reminded me at that point that no matter how profound I may think I am, <laughs> if it doesn't speak to the the people that I'm speaking to, it doesn't really make any difference. <laughs> so <laughs> so true, right? Which totally applies to doing online marketing, right? Where you yeah, have exactly. to know your target demographic, how to talk to them, your brand, your messaging, all of that, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yep. Well, and, and one of the things is, you know, it seems like it, you, you touched on this point is that you had to change your business model to continue to grow. And if you hadn't started, that wouldn't have, have happened, right? Exactly, exactly. Even though, even though we've changed directions a couple of times along the way, exactly, if we hadn't gotten started, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have got where we are. Right. 
We all have to yeah. start somewhere. That's for sure. <laughs> that's right. Yes. Yes. And, you know, you had asked, I guess we were talking earlier, and you had said something about the three places that people get stuck. Yeah. 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 Tell us about and that. Yeah. When, we're, when we're coaching people, what we find is that there are people that, that have, have started, but they've got, there's missing pieces. You know, they, they've got an idea how to get started with this. They know where generally they want the business to go, but they don't have all the pieces in place. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, knowing who their target uh, audience is and knowing uh, what their core message is and how they're going to how they're going to make money. You know, I had somebody, for example, in one of our coaching sessions that was so frustrated, you know, with the little bit of cash flow she had. And I, I asked her just a couple simple questions like, well, how much, how much do you make on each, on each sale or transaction you have? And I think it was $5. <laughs> and I said, okay, then how many, how many transactions do you need to make each month to make what you, your goal. Your goal? Yeah. And she said, well, that's impossible. There's no way I could do that. <laughs> but she hadn't thought through She this. hadn't thought through that. And, you know, and I said, okay, that's great. You just learned one business model that's not working. Not viable. Yeah. Right. Time to shift. <laughs> yeah. Let's figure it out. Let's figure out one that does work for you. <laughs> well, that's encouraging. That's so lovely that you said that rather than, okay, well, good luck. Okay, well, let's talk through something we can monetize properly for. You. <laughs> exactly. So some of them have missing pieces. Another thing we've learned is that it's people trying to do things in the wrong order. Yeah, that's um, a big one. You know, there's things like, oh, social media marketing has become so popular and it's great to get out there and build an audience on social media and try it and, and, and looking for sales out there. But when, we, when we're talking with somebody and they say, well, I've got 5,000 in my audience on Facebook, since that seems to be the, the go-to one right now, we started on, on Twitter, but that was a few years back. And I'd say, okay, and, and who, is, who exactly is your target audience? Well, sort of whoever will listen. And, <laughs> and, and so they've built this big audience, but they have nothing in, in common. They have no particular relation to what they're selling. And, uh, and I'm thinking, okay, let's, Go let's, back to the drawing let's go board. back to the first steps mm -hmm. <laughs> and begin with the foundation and put things in place. And then, yeah, we'll get to these, these things or they're doing, you know, another one is the third one. People wanting to get into Facebook ads oh. when they haven't, oh, yeah, that's still when, they, when they don't know how they're, yeah. how they're going to monetize. monetize or how they're going to nurture their people or how they're mm -hmm. going to sell their product yet. Mm -hmm. And boy, you can lose a lot of money that way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yeah, it's like it's like buying the furniture before you've built the house. Exactly. That's exactly. A That's a so great one. missing pieces, doing things in the wrong order, and then what we talked about earlier, just overwhelm. I've <laughs> got all these things I need to do. Where do I focus? Yeah. How to prioritize? And we run into a lot of people that that are just paralyzed because there's there's so many things that they've learned that they need to do but <laughs> what one thing do i need to do today or <laughs> and to have that clarity to know oh i get up tomorrow and i'm going to do this because mm -hmm. you're following a process yeah i mean it just takes away the overwhelm and to me that's the biggest and being you know i like to work with people on their time optimization <laughs> skills that's my favorite one Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah. So one of the, one of the things that I like that a lot of people don't realize is that there's about 8,000 different types of software just related to the online marketing world. Wow. Yeah, it's extreme. And you think about that. Think about all the time it takes to research just one software to see if it will 
work for your business, then to go through a trial to, to implement it and the learning and, curve and the learning curve of learning the software or, you know, whatever it is. And then suddenly you, you sit there and you go, well, if you're being bombarded with ads all day to do this, you're being told by this coach and this coach and this course and this book that I read to do this and this and this and this, it's just so much. It's, it's too much for people to handle. And so what do they do? They, well, they do nothing. They do nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> we see that a lot. So, yeah, we do. So what, what strategies do you, do you pull from to help people overcome some of the overwhelm and, and, and see that bigger picture of, of their yes. business? Yes. Well, the way we, the way we visualize it is that we, we see three stages. The first one we think of is testing their foundation. Mm. And then the second one is building a pipeline for profit. And the third one is releasing the flow of leads and cash. Mm. And then, so then each one of those stages, we break down into four steps. So in the foundations, we want to work on uh, understanding where you're headed, and then after that, what's, what's your problem? <laughs> and by that, I mean, what is the problem that you can solve for somebody else? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And okay, once we know that, then we usually move on to, okay, who are the people that have this particular problem or need? Mm -hmm. And let's identify them and figure out where they hang out. And then the fourth uh, step is monetization. How are you going to make money doing this? Hmm. And once we've got those four sets of questions figured out, and we've done entire webinars on each one of them, and you know, each one is a module in our pathway to profit, then we get to stage two. And in stage two, we want to start out by attracting leads into their pipeline. And then how do they develop their own authority so that people will listen to what they have to say? How do they nurture the people that come into this pipeline? And finally, at some point, people have to decide, am I going to buy or not? <laughs> and you know so that's that's the fourth step in in that just how what are you going to use to create a a moment of decision where people decide if they're if they're in or or not and once we've got all those in place then we move on to the third stage and that begins with getting free eyeballs on your offer and in our day to day, that's usually uh, through social media. And although we've, dis we've discovered that partnerships are working better for us, not that we don't use social media, but we're getting more leads through partnerships than we are simply through the, the social media, then people need to uh, think through their content strategy. How are they going to develop their authority and then if they ever get to this then then comes paid ads mm -hmm. and the final the final step being how do we optimize all of these pieces and uh, uh, maximize our cash flow from this yeah and that's one of the biggest things people don't understand is that when you go to paid ads it's to scale what you are doing, what doing. Yeah. after you've got works. systems and processes and uh, things in place, but also at least a general idea of what's converting and what's not. But I, I have to, I have to say though that some sometimes social media ads can be used as a great testing ground as well. They can, it's if you have the budget. Yeah, if you have the budget, correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's there's times that we've gone to ads for exactly that that reason. We've got a we've got a concept or a, an idea here that we need to test mm -hmm. or we need to know is is this going to convert people 
cold traffic or not. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we wanted, let's run a test and, and see. And mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got my online marketing start doing a lot of Facebook ads. And I remember it was so fun and it was so lucrative at the time. And it just changes so quickly. It's amazing how the results today versus years ago, like the difference. Obviously there's so sure. many more people online right now. Have you found that with your, with your clients that the strategy around social media or paid, paid online marketing ads in general has shifted pretty significantly from when you first got started in this business? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why it's so important for us, you know, as coaches that are teaching it, you know, to stay up on it and yeah, to exactly. stay in communities where the people that that's what they do, mm -hmm. you know, we can lean in on them and say, okay, what, what is happening, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can be relevant without having to do it all ourselves. Yeah. And that's where those partnerships come in. You know, we, we don't dive super deep on any of these things. We get everybody on like a first or second level. And then if that's where they're going to take their business, we have these partnerships designed to help people dive deep. Yeah. That's wonderful. That's it's something the client that's been journey. It's brand new. We're, we're developing those as we speak. It's been really helpful to realize that even though we are, you know, it's the two of us in this business, Mm -hmm. by ourselves yeah that still this is a team effort and you know that we we are in relationship well with with you two and with all sorts of other businesses some of whom come before us in the flow of things and when when they've helped get people started they they need what we have to offer and some of whom come after us and and we work with them for a while and then say okay now you need to go see so-and-so for this. Mm -hmm. That was just a, a real insight for us when we realized that it was m much better to see ourselves as just one piece of, of the whole process. Yeah. I feel like there's a good opportunity for exponential growth when you bring in your team, right? When you, when you build those relationships mm -hmm. and those partnerships, Rory and I do that all the time. We know, Hey, we're not going to go ahead and learn the ins and outs of this thing over here. That person's the expert. Let's bring them in. Right. Cause there's only so much exactly. done in a day, <laughs> you know, exactly. And, and when you start to build those relationships, it's amazing. And I, I'm sure you'll find this too. The amount of work that you want to have will come back tenfold to you, right? Where you make these relationships and people will start thinking, Oh, let's go over to the hacks drums. And we, we know exactly what they have going on. And it becomes this pretty, wonderful feeling, this great community that can really come out of it. So I'm glad that you're deciding to take your business in that direction. Cause I know for me, can't speak for Rory. I hope, I hope this is how you feel Rory, but it just, it just feels very full. It's a very full way of running, running business when we're all doing it together in a, in a fun way and including everybody. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's how I feel. Uh, my business is right. tons of partnerships. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dana, you had mentioned some stuff about time management. That that was something you were really interested in. So I wanted to, uh, you to speak a little bit about that, and you know, maybe some strategies that people could use in in their daily lives to help them with all these tasks that we have to do as business owners. I would love to. I mean, that's that's my sweet spot. But you know. <laughs> Everybody has their own relationship with time, but at the same time, we all have the same 24 hours. So, you know, everyone's going to be a little bit different. So what works for, for you might not work for me and doesn't work for David, but there's plenty of opportunities to, to explore what those are. But just a, a simple, easy takeaway, I would say, is, is my plan formula. And I love this. It's just super simple, but it's... You know, we all have things we have to get done every day. And so the P in plan, because it's an acronym, I love acronyms, you know. <laughs> um, the, the P in plan is to prioritize. And you get really good at, you know, listing things and, and prioritizing your tasks. We all have tasks we need to do. And so listing them out so that they're not floating around in your head, causing you chaos in your brain, get it on a piece of paper. And then you can you know, figure out what are non-negotiables that you need to get done, what can wait till tomorrow and start to, you know, plan that sort of thing out so that it's visual, you can see it, it's not in your head anymore, you know, taking up space. And try not to make anything more than three or four 
must do's, <clears throat> but then make sure you get those done. So that's the P. Mm -hmm. The L is leisure. And that is important for every day that you build in some fun, some leisure, something that isn't work. Mm -hmm. And that will look, will look different for everybody. You know, it could mean reading a book for someone, you know, like a chapter in a book. And it doesn't have to be something you do for hours. It could even be something 10, 15 minutes. Maybe it's a walk around the block. Just something that isn't work, that is something you want to do. Like you playing the piano. Like, yes, exactly, exactly. And then every day should have the A stands for achievement. So what are you doing to learn, to grow, to be the better you? And personal development, you know, we say that that's the kind of the key phrase in, in, you know, the online space, but achieve, what are you, what are you working for? Maybe that's watching a training video. Maybe that's reading the book. That's where you put that in, but to plan something in each day. And then the, the other one, the N, I struggled with this one, but it's neatly organized. And that speaks to your environment. You want to always be looking around you and, and picking something that you can do to organize your environment or, or make it fit you better. So if that bathroom sink is driving you crazy because it's, it's full and it's messy and there's all that loose hair in there, maybe that's what you do that day is clean out your drawer. But you're, you're building something where you're, you're, you're cleaning, you're cleansing your environment because that will help also in, in just making you a happier person. So those are things you can do whether you're business owners or not, is just make sure that you have those pieces in every day. And you'll be amazed at just that, those tweaks will help. I have to reiterate something that you said and really drive it home for our listeners. You said everyone has a different relationship with time and we all have the same 24 hours. And that's really, really profound. If you actually think about that, it's like, it's so much can get done when we do have a plan. Right. So it's, mm -hmm. I thank you. Thank you for, for saying that it's really important. Yeah. And, and one, one other question, cause I know that this comes up with the clients and, and with people that I talk with is that they, so let's say they put six items on their list and they prioritize three, but three other ones are much more fun to do than <laughs> they, that are priorities and they, they just want to do the fun ones. How, how do you approach that and how, how do you help people get past that so they actually get the priority ones done? Well, you can set a reward, reward system, you know, however it works for that person. Now it could be those fun things are hours long, but if they're short, you know, use it as a reward. You know, you, you get one of your must do's done. Oh, that means I can go play the piano for a second or whatever it is. Use it as a reward, but you know, don't overdo it. But sometimes our brains need that, that little bit of encouragement. Mm -hmm. So, and there are times when I've even taken a day to just I've gotten this, all these, all these little things that have accumulated on my task list that are not the main priority, but just having all these items there is distracting me. Hmm. And sometimes, so then I'll just set aside a, you know, a period of time or even a day to just get a bunch of them off the list. And that could be a huge, rel that relief yeah. will, will really catapult you into action as well. Mm -hmm. to get those yeah. Off. So for like, example, if you had like 50 emails that you had to get done, you'd just set aside a time block to just focus on that and get it off get your it list. Yeah. yeah. Get it off. <laughs> yeah. The problem with emails though, is they just keep coming. Oh, yeah. I, oh know. I know. I know. <laughs> it's a blessing. <laughs> Oh, but you know, it's a lot. It's, right. like a, it's like another job, just checking and responding to emails. <laughs> I have a question for, for both of you. I'm wondering what advice you could offer business owners who are looking to move to a new country, because that's something really unique that you've accomplished and you're still there and you're still thriving. So what advice would you offer? Do your homework. We bought a course actually that was helping people do to make those transitions abroad and that gave us a whole checklist of things to to look into mm -hmm. and there's also a wealth of information like the the consulate 
we visited the Mexican consulate in the United States. And you know, you have to go through a lot of paperwork and all of that, but their website will also have a lot of information. That's how we knew what to do with our dogs, our pets. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just come across the border with dogs. Who knew? Right. Unless well, <laughs> if you have more than four. If you have four dogs, you can't bring four dogs into Mexico without some extra hoops. And, and even if one, you yeah. have to have all the certificates in order. Right. And have a vet do this and do that. And so it's so do your homework. So do your homework and put it on a calendar. I need to get this done by this date, this done by this date. And the, actually, that's what that course was that we had purchased at that time. They, it was 90 days of emails. And each, each email simply said, today you need to get this done. Wow. That seems really helpful. Oh yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they let you know ahead of time sort of what the, what the schedule was going to look like. But if you got all those things done, on, you know, when they needed to be done, when you got to the end, you were ready to go. <laughs> How helpful. I love that someone even thought to do that. <laughs> That's I know, great. Right? I know. Right. And then oh, when we got here, we realized there is, there is a service here. So even an expat service that was helping people do the same thing this course was. We'd yeah. already, we knew what we were doing. So that was all right. But for people that didn't know that course existed, mm -hmm. sometimes there are agencies and expat communities at their destination and you can check into them as well. Hmm. Right. Yeah. You know, something along, along these lines is in the U.S., we get fed a lot of information misinformation about Mexico, how it's portrayed and in the media and in movies and stuff like that. What is your advice to people, you know, that are maybe considering Mexico as a place to live? Like what, what has been your experience and, you know, the, the, the good and the bad? Sure. One of the things that I would say is tell me about going to a big city in the United States. Are there areas where you wouldn't go at night by yourself? Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, are there, are there some simple practical things you can do to keep yourself safe? And, you know, okay, we are in a, we're in a different country. They have a different way of life than we're used to. I'm not going to change no. Mexican culture. No. I need to learn how to fit in as part of uh, Mexican culture here. Mm -hmm. So in some areas, I feel completely com comfortable walking the streets at 3 a.m. and I'm not worried And we've at all. done that, so <laughs> there before are, COVID. There are other places where I would want to make sure I was in a group mm -hmm. and even then, get out of the area as quickly as possible. And probably be in a car. Yeah. You know, a lot of things are common sense too. Mexico is a developing country. Many of the people are very poor. I'm not going to flash my wealth. I'm probably not going to walk down the street wearing a Rolex watch. Right. and or drive a fancy car or yeah to draw anything that will draw attention to you i know a lot of the expat women here they wear a lot of beautiful jewelry and i'm like why you're mm. just kind of setting yourself up as a target you know we don't see a lot of homicides happening you know for 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 that sort of thing but we do see you know burglaries you know because these people like he said it's poor and right now with covid it's even it's scarier yeah. So yeah. most of the violence just don't that, your wealth. Yeah, most of the violence that uh, has nothing to do with, like you say, burglaries or robberies or things. Right. For the most part, if they want something, they'll take it. They don't want to. They don't hurt. want to hurt anybody. No. Huh. But the violence has to do with the with the drug trade, mm -hmm. and and the cartels. Right. And as long as you stay away from that, you're generally generally pretty safe. For the people in, for the Mexican people, that's something that they worry about a lot because uh, it's so attractive to young people, especially to be able to make a lot of money real fast if they get involved with this, with this group that you know they, 
like like gangs in any place, they can sound very attractive. Hmm. Um, and of course, that's where that's where people end up either disappearing yeah. hmm. or being killed. But it's interesting, the Mexicans in general look at the United States and they hear about school shootings and shootings at malls and concerts and things like that. And they, it's hard for them to understand how, could, how anybody can live in a society that, that's that crazy with that kind of violence. It's like the, the negative from all countries seem highlighted. It's like, that's what oh, we get from each country, right? right. Exactly. Right. That's what that's they themselves. hear about the U.S., yeah, you know, right. and that's what the U.S. hears about Mexico, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they don't realize that, you know, just like in the U.S., you know, ninety percent of the people around you, and I, I, I throw that eyes out as a number. There's no statistic behind that. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the people around you are are really fine people, and I'm not, you know, afraid of them or worried about relating with them. Well, the same is true in Mexico. The, the people around us are, are wonderful people. We, we love the, the people and the culture. Hmm. Yes, there's a few bad eggs out there that you have to watch out for. Right. But now the, that's, that's true everywhere. <laughs> yeah. the, big, the big question is, do you both speak Spanish? Un poco. Un poco. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love your transparency about that. That's great. We... We speak a lot more Spanish now than we did when we arrived here. Mm -hmm. We okay. understand a lot. I like bet. Our, you know, when our maid is here, she, she doesn't speak any English. So she talks to me and I know what she's saying. I, I can't always say back or answer her. So then I go to Google Translate and I type my answer and then I have her read it because I want to, you know, have a conversation. I don't want to just speak in words very very comfortable with uh, trans transactions right mm. you know you go to the store and you need to do something there you go to a restaurant and you need to order something you, mm -hmm. you know all the all the basic transactions of life are 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 pretty easy for us now in spanish good well that's but, great but to have an extended conversation with someone or to coach one of our clients is is spanish speaking first language and so it's yeah it's sometimes tricky so we have to kind of dummy down our language a little bit because her english is good but her english is better than our spanish so she <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's helpful to think of it when when she's when we're talking to her in english she's having to translate that much as we have to when yeah when we deal with so so i find myself talking slower because that's what i appreciate when, when the Mexican speaks slower to me, I can hear a little better. Yeah. We watch our Mexican television on half speed so we can hear it. Well, you, <laughs> that's my half speed. Half speed, okay, <laughs> seven, point seven. Point seven or point, <laughs> usually it's point seven or point eight. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. But that's smart, you know, just slowing stuff down because, you know, we, we tend to do the opposite when we're learning and speed stuff up, mm -hmm. you know, in our own language. All right. Like get it in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have the time, get it in. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> but, in, but that's smart. And it's actually one of the strategies you use uh, when you're learning an instrument, slow mm -hmm. down. Exactly. It's slow down what you're playing to learn it properly. Right. Right. Count it, count it out. Oh, I hate counting. I hate counting. I hate counting. Yeah. <laughs> But it's still the best way to get that rhythm down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's muscle memory. Well, this has been such a joy speaking with both of you. Truly just an honor. And, and I love how we met. I believe it was on Instagram, right? We had sent an Instagram message. So there you go. Social media marketing right there. There you go. I love that connection. Is there any final thought or advice that you would like our listeners to know about you and what you do or just in general about business and, and online marketing? Well, the first thing we want to say is how to get in touch with us. Yeah, please. And our website is david, the letter N, Dana.com. And if you'd like a walkthrough of our solution framework, our, yeah, our solution framework, how to have a lead bring, magnet, bring people into your funnel. Yeah. 
That is simply davidmdana.com slash solution. And since you talked about time, what about you've got another giveaway there that they could oh, they could get is super popular too same thing davidanddana.com but slash time and that's my time management tool to take back your control of your time and my parting thought is gratitude always lead with gratitude be mm. thankful like we're super thankful to have this time with you guys today and with your audience mm. but Wake up each morning and before your feet hit the floor, what are those three things you're grateful for? What first three things that come to your mind and start the day every day with gratefulness? The other thing that I would bring up is about 30 years ago, I took a year off from ministry to study guitar in Hollywood. Wow. Wow. And, and I always intended to continue that study and focus on jazz improvisation. Hmm. And, but I was always too busy. During my career, I was too busy. And even now in retirement, focusing on our business and other things going on, it's easy for me to say, I, I don't have time to get, get to practice. Hmm. But what happened over the years is my, my skill slipped from lack of practice and got to the place where I didn't even really enjoy picking up my instrument because everything, you know, I couldn't play at the level that I was used to playing. And then I saw an advertisement for an online course that was exactly what I needed to, to review the basics of jazz guitar improvisation and then take it to the next level together with an excellent jazz musician that I, that I already knew of outside of the course, you know, and, but then I thought, oh, but it's not free. And it's stuff I, I, I really know myself and it's just a matter of, of, getting into the focused practice and but another year went by and i still hadn't <laughs> gotten any bit better mm -hmm. and so i finally signed up for the course and i was amazed in just a, a short period how much i learned how much came back just with the accountability of you know I, somebody that was facilitating a group that was doing the work together, knowing what I needed to get done this week and, and the following week and so on. And that, that was, you know, such an experience for me. I, I just realized that that simple accountability of the, of the teacher and the curriculum and stuff made such a difference. Yeah. And I just want to encourage people that as they, you know, they'll, they'll hear the next thing that they need to work on and and it'll sink in and you say okay that's exactly what i need well if that's exactly what you need then just do it <laughs> take action do it absolutely yeah, absolutely. yeah uh, so, the, yeah. the right the right course the right information the right coach it can change your life exactly yeah. exactly yeah. No true words. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and to append that also, because I've spoken about this in other episodes and I have a, a book coming out about it, just spending five minutes a day doing something consistently every single day, mm -hmm. doing this with, you know, practicing guitar, you can make progress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It adds and it, on and to it builds other. on itself. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. if you aren't consistent, you don't do it, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Consistency. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we will have a link to all your free gifts and offers. Thank you so, so much, as well as a link to their Pathway to Profit course. If that's of interest to anyone, you can pick that up at bpbpodcast.com and we'll have all the ways that you can connect with them. And so thank you so much again, just for being on the show. Again, this has been a joy to speak with you and hopefully we can do this again sometime. This was really fun. Oh, it was It fun. was really fun. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, absolutely. We really appreciate it. Hey there, remember to like, subscribe, and be sure to ring that notification bell to receive a new episode every Tuesday. See you next week.